MLB The Show 24 just released a brand new set of storylines again. This time, part two to the Derek Jeter storylines. And with it comes a brand new Yankees slash Cleveland legend. I don't know if I would consider him a Yankees legend. Stay tuned. Let's hop into it. September 11th, 2001. I was actually sleeping. I woke up and had a message from Jorge Posada, and he told me something happened at the World Trade Center and to let him know about the game later that night if I had heard anything. And I turned on the television, and obviously, you're glued to the TV. And it was the first time during my career I felt as though, what are we doing? Like, why are we playing? It's just a game. I mean, it's, that doesn't mean anything. chance to speak with family members who were searching for loved ones they were sharing memories of watching us play and saying how even though times were rough they enjoyed rooting for us for those three hours and the way we looked at it was we were giving New Yorkers something to cheer for for even just a short period of time and we took on that responsibility of representing all of New York it seemed like for a period of time, it wasn't just New Yorkers. It was like everyone was rallying behind us. Two and two. Messina with a sign. That's probably the play I get asked about the most. You got to wait for a gapper. That's fair. Get in the right field line. And they're going to wave him around. The throw misses a cutoff, man. Shot out. For some reason, Jeter found himself about 15 feet from home plate. I was exactly where I was supposed to be. I mean, it's a play that we had worked on where I'm the third cutoff man. Now, my job as a third cutoff man is basically to redirect the throw to get the runner going to third base. But I realized we had some extra time. I just caught it and got rid of it as soon as I possibly could. And I tell people that's where I was supposed to be, and they don't believe me. Like I said, we were giving New Yorkers something to cheer for. Wow, starting it off with some hot and heavy stuff there with 9-11. Man, that was a rough time for sure. It was, uh, I was really young and I didn't quite understand why my parents were so scared. But it was really cool when we had sports to kind of help us get away from things. So, let's see how we're going to do the flip. All right, lined up at shortstop. Musino with his supremely long windup. There's the pitch. Oh, it's driven to right field. My goodness. We're just going to jog along here. Why are we stopping? We got to keep going. Okay, we're just going to alternate these here. Okay, okay. A, B, Y, X, B. Yeah, got him. Derek Jeter, let's go, baby. Hey, that was pretty cool. I didn't really know what to do at first. You basically have to alternate them like you're like running with your little feetsies. And then you do the little uh, quick time event. Sweet. Let's hop into the next one. The scoreboard clock is left center field. Reads 12 o'clock. And for the first time in the history of baseball, this is November baseball. You realize the first time the World Series has been played in November. And I had jokingly told... Mr. Torrey that his contract was up at midnight. I don't have to listen to him anymore. So I gave him my bat and said, put one more hit in it. And the 0-1. Swan a miss. Blew a fastball by him upstairs, 0-2. I did not like facing sidearm pitchers at all during my career. I just never picked him up. Didn't have a lot of confidence against him. Matter of fact, the bat before, I tried to bunt. And I was thrown out because I just didn't see him. But in that particular bat, I saw a lot of pitches. I fell behind, got back in the count, I fouled a few pitches off. So I started to figure out his release point. And just one of those moments in Yankee Stadium, and funny things happen. And he is going to go from the stretch on 3 2. And the 3 2 pitch. All right. 
right, here we go. Welcome to November Baseball. Hey, November 1st, 2001. I was just an 11-year-old boy. And uh, I hated the Yankees then much more than I do now. So let's try and hit a ding-dong here with Mr. November, Derek Jeter. Okay, all right. We got to go ding-dong. And that's not a ding-dong. Oh, yeah. There it is. Ding-dong. The Diamondbacks are dead. But didn't they win this World Series? Am I stupid? Don't answer that. And the 3-2 pitch. Swung on a drill to right field. Going back downs. And the check at the wall. It was every kid's dream hitting a walk-off home run in the World Series. That's what every kid dreams of. It's what I dreamed of. You practice it in your backyard. A game-winning walk-off home run by Derek Jeter. He is Mr. November. When I first heard Mr. November, I mean, I didn't think it was something that was going to stick. I just thought it was something for a day. But I'll tell you a funny story. I ran, and I jumped up on the home plate, and I messed up my heel. So you go through some of the highlights of the rest of the World Series, I'm limping all over the place. That was the first and last time I jumped up on home plate. Some of the loudest games that we played during my career were in the World Series in 2001. You don't have an opportunity every single year to get to the ultimate goal. And um, you know, unfortunately, we didn't win that World Series, but uh, I still hear about that World Series as much as any World Series I played in. Hey, I guess I'm not an idiot. All right, that wraps up 2001. We are moving on to 2003. Looks like just one moment here before we pop on over to 2004. Let's hop into it. proud again to introduce the 11th captain of the New York Yankees, Derek Jeter. Captain is not a title that's thrown around lightly in our organization. You know, there's only been a few of them. That one hit to left field, way back, Derek Jeter, bad hand and all, goodbye, home run over the wall. You don't dream about being captain of the Yankees. I mean, the dream is to make it to the major leagues, play for the Yankees, win World Series, but you don't sit down and say, oh yeah, I want to be a captain on top of that. Pitch is hit in the air to deep left. It is high. It is far. It is gone. I think it's something that evolves over time. You get to know your teammates. You get to know personalities. If you speak all the time, people stop paying attention to what you say. I think you speak when you need to make a point. I'd like to thank the boss, obviously, for uh, giving me this title. And it's something that I, I will always treasure. And, you know, I'll do it to the best of my ability. Thank you. To this day is one of the greatest honors I've received during my playing career. And it's something that sticks with you. You know, I still go around now and people call me captain. It's something that I never took lightly. It was a big responsibility. You have responsibility to your teammates, the fans, the organization, the media. I took it very seriously. All right, the captain. We just got to get a hit in an RBI here. Easy peasy. Let's hop into it. There it is. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Easy peasy, moving on. All right, that was a very quick pit stop in 2003. We are in 2004 now. One of my favorite years because it is the year that the Red Sox came back from down 3 nothing against the Yankees. We are going to hop in on July 1st, 2004 in extra innings against the Red Sox. Derek Jeter crashes into the stands after making a running catch. One, two. He loops that to left field. Going to be a tough play. Jeter on the ball. Makes the play. Oh. In 2001, I fell into the photographer's pit during a postseason game. Jeter makes the catch and falls into the crowd. In this particular game against Boston, Catching the pop-up was not hard. That's not a hard play. It's an easy play, matter of fact. But 
I knew I was running out of room, going through my head, what am I going to do? You know, do I try to run into the wall? Do I slide? My mind went back to when I fell in the photographer's pit, so let me just jump over it. Pure hustle, pure guts. I got to make the play. Nothing else matters. So I figured I'd just land in someone's lap, but I landed in the one seat that had no fan during that game. I mean, it's just full tilt. There's no way you could stop. People say all the time, you, you could have stopped. I couldn't stop. Yeah, I didn't have time to stop. Wow. Wow. Cheetah really yeah, banged I himself he, up. Wow. The catch wasn't hard, but the aftermath hurt. All right, let's hop in here and make this overrated catch with Derek Jeter. Come on. All right, here's the pitch. Okay. We're running. We're running. Okay, we got to move the glove over and hit A. Nice. And that's it. The easiest thing ever. Overrated. Where's the blood, bro? Pretty boy Jeter doesn't want blood on his player model. Come on, boys. Come on. We're moving on. Do we have to talk about 2004 with Boston? Probably from 98 forward. We were always close with Boston. I mean, we were arguably the top two teams in baseball. Pedro Martinez with 17 strikeouts. Jorge Posada with a two-run shot. He is going, and Ortiz pounds a home run into right. There's a fly ball deep to left. If you play someone that many times, they're bound to beat you at some point. Ortiz into deep right field. We'll see you later tonight. That series hurts as much as any series I've played in. Damon running to the plate, and he can keep on running to New York. Game six tomorrow night. I don't play it back and go, what if? Because we were in the situation we wanted to be. Game four, game five, we're right where we wanted to be. Damon hits it in the air at the wall, a grand slam. Ground ball to second. Reese, the Boston Red Sox have won the pennant with the biggest comeback in postseason baseball history. Tip your hats to them. I mean, they kept battling, and they came back, and they beat us. And there was a lot of pressure on Boston. I mean, they hadn't won in a long, 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 long time. And they always had to answer the questions about losing us all the time. And But that still hurts today. You can tell that Jeets is still a little bit salty about that. I can't blame him. I can't blame him. Hey, that was a quick stop in 04. We are going to make a pit stop in 06 here. An impressive season. Jeter finishes second in the 2006 AL MVP race with a 343 batting average, 97 RBIs, and a career high 34 stolen bases. Not bad. So we're going to have to go in here, record two hits, including an extra base hit in one game. Let's hop into it. Ooh, okay, no video package, just straight gameplay. Let's go, baby. Yeah? Yeah? All right, there's our extra base hit. Piece of cake, baby. Hey, as much as I hate the spotlight that Derek Jeter's gotten over the past couple years, just because I'm a salty Red Sox fan, his swing is definitely butter. I, I'll give him that. All right, we are in 2009 now. Looks like it's going to be the meatiest, the girthiest year in this part two of the storylines. New stadium, new all-time hits leader. Derek Jeter becomes the Yankees' all-time hits leader. 2,722 career hits later. Let's hop in. It's a huge honor to put this uniform on every day and come out here and play. And every member of this organization past and present has been calling this place home for 85 years and although things are going to change next year we're going to move across the street there are a few things with the new york yankees that never change that's pride it's tradition and most of all we have the greatest fans in the world Still back, still back, looking up. See ya! The first home run here at Yankee Stadium off the bat of Jorge Posada. I felt as though in 2009 we had the most talented team. He struck him out. Talent's going to help you win. Ball game over, and another mob at home plate at the new house. Whether it was the first.
first inning, the ninth inning, we were never out of a game, and we were capable of scoring a lot of runs quick. And the 2 0. There it is. For 72 years, Lou Gehrig has been the Yankees' all time hits leader. Now it's Derek Jeter. One thing with Yankee fans is they're very aware of the history of the organization. And when I was setting the all time hit record, for the Yankees, it's something that meant a lot to the fans. And it's a big deal. You don't ever put on a major league uniform, especially a Yankee uniform, and say, you know, one day I'm going to have more hits than anyone that's played because it seems so far-fetched with all the great players that have been there. I didn't give my myself a chance to reflect at all. It's a character flaw for me. I was always, what's next, what's next? My focus is always on the team and always on winning. My parents used to always try to tell me to enjoy the ride. I couldn't. I played a long time, and I tried to be consistent. So I was able to set that record. 27-22, and he moves ahead of the legendary iron horse, Henry Lewis Garrett. Hey, man, 27-22, that is a lot of hits. And obviously... He did not stop there. Let's go ahead and hop into this moment. You did get a peek at the new legend, CC Sabathia, joining the game. As far as I know, the only card he has is a lower rated card that you get as a reward for these storylines that gets boosted by the Derek Jeter captain. But uh, obviously, we'll be looking forward to him getting a much higher rated card later on in the season. Hey, is that going to count as a hit? I think it will. Now it's the bottom of the ninth. Let me get this second hit here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And a high fly ball belted down the left field line. It is gone. Our postseason run in 2009, we have a good chance of winning the World Series. I didn't like playing in the Metrodome. You know, pop-ups, fly balls, you lose it in the roof. They had the old artificial turf. It was time for a new stadium in Minnesota. Ground ball hit out to Cheater. How apropos. And the Yankees are moving on to the American League Championship Series for the first time since 2004. In order for us to win in 09, we had to get through Anaheim. Anaheim gave us problems every year. Percy delivers, and it popped up. Makes the catch. It's Angel Canado. The Yankees are going home empty to New York. They were aggressive. They pitched. They played defense. They ran the bases. They gave us a real tough time, and I think for us, Anaheim was a thorn in our side. Jeter lines one into center. The run will score. Jeter will hold, and it's 4-1. Once we got through Anaheim, I figured we'd win a World Series that year. Got him on the outside corner. Yankees win the pennants. We get a chance to go back and celebrate and experience the success that we had years ago. It had been a long time coming for us. Hard to imagine the Angels being a thorn in anybody's side in the postseason. But let's hop into this. First up, we got to just get a hit here at the Metrodome. I think that'll drop. Nope, I'm wrong. Okay. Drop ball. Just let it be great. We're moving on, baby. All right, hopping right back into some gameplay here. 2009 AOCS against the Angels, like Jeter was talking about. We're going to try and get two base hits. Let's go. Yeah? Okay, that'll do. That sun is blinding me. Holy cow. Let me get some shades on. Oh, yeah. Right up the middle. That'll do it. Just late be great. And we are moving on, fellas and ladies. All right, here we go. World Series 2009 
against the Phillies, two hits. Let's get it. Wow, seeing Pedro on the Phillies makes it gives me the willies. Let me just say. Bro, I don't care if it's digital or what, but using Derek Jeter to get hits off of Pedro Martinez, Phillies uniform, Red Sox uniform, Expos uniform, I don't care. It feels wrong. Oh, they're giving me another at bat, and this time it's not against Pedro. See, physically, I just I just wasn't able to do that against Pedro. Now we're gonna now we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. It's not that I suck at the game, boys. Come on. There it is. See, I told you. Late is great. What a World Series it should be. A great matchup. Why? These are two veteran teams. That ball is hit down the right field line into the corner. It is one nothing Phillies. I thought we matched up well against the Phillies. We had to beat them, right? They're the defending champions. Here's an 0-2. And a good start for Cliff Lee as he strikes out Jeter on three pitches. It'll pop up. Lee will take it himself. <laughs> I know they had a confident group. We had confidence as well. Got him. And a strikeout for Burnett. Two on, one out. 1-1 one, one pitch is grounded under the glove of Rollins. Thrown by Ibanez is late. Pitching, we had defense, we had offense, we could score. There goes Damon. The throws in the dirt, and Damon keeps going after the pop-up slide. We could beat you in many different ways, and I think we showed it in that series. To the second baseman, the Yankees are back on top. World champions for the 27th time. It was like a reminder of this is what it feels like, because we hadn't won since 2000. You know, we lost in 01, we lost in 03. And the Florida Marlins are world champions. And then to win again, it's like you, you almost forget what it feels like. Especially going to the ticker tape parade again. No disrespect to any other city, but I can't see a championship celebration being any better than it is in New York. I mean, millions of people hanging from light poles and buildings, that feeling of winning is something that you miss. All right, from a rather girthy 2009 World Series winning season for Derek Jeter, we are jumping ahead to a much leaner 2011. Let's hop in here. We're going to talk about some stolen bases, eh? eh? Ooh, just hopping into some gameplay here. Uh, yeah, what it was saying was Derek Jeter, I think it said 327 career stolen bases, is the all-time leader in stolen bases for the Yankees. Wait, they want me to get on base and then steal a base? They're asking a lot here, man. Well, we got on base. That's not bad. Hey, man. Hey, man. You watch it. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Get their jeets. That a boy. Speed demon. I don't know why that got me so hyped. We're moving on. Getting my 3,000 hit was a relief. Anytime something was focused solely on me, it made me uncomfortable. I put a lot of pressure on myself to do it. I did put a lot of pressure on myself to do it at home, and I struggled quite a bit. It was a relief. And Derek becomes the 28th man to pick up 3,000 hits, the first Yankee ever in the glorious history of the franchise, and he does it with a home run. It gave me a chance to exhale. Consistency in my mind is the most undervalued and underappreciated characteristic in any profession. 
You don't miss it until it's gone. I think it's consistency in your overall behavior. I think it's in your work ethic. I try to be consistent day in and day out. I wanted the organization, I wanted my teammates to be able to count on me, fan base to be able to count on me. And I took a lot of pride in that. thousand for the Jeter meter pretty impressive pretty impressive as we see Derek Jeter taking it all in we've got to tally four total bases this game let's hop into it get up over his head ball yes sir that'll be two bases okay yeah nice I don't know I was kind of worried we were gonna get thrown out there I right, need two more bases here hey into the gap we're going two here. Go Jeets. Go Jeets. He ain't as good as he once was. But he's as good once as he ever was. Yeah, we got thrown out right there. I was really intending to make it to second. Well, now we got to get a hit. There it is. There it is. Beautiful stuff. As we move on to, I believe, 2014, Derek Jeter's final year. You know, I took a lot of time uh, thinking about this. You know, last year I've, I've been very vocal on how disappointing last year was, how hard it was for me to play. Most importantly, I always told myself if it felt like a job, then it was time for me to go home. And I had broken my ankle twice. 2012 and then in 2013 it had become physically too challenging for me to play i knew it was time for me to retire the last season was tough for me it almost felt like i was attending my funeral in every city i go to for the last time because they're showing highlights of my career and giving me parting gifts which i appreciated very much but it was a tough year for me game at Yankee Stadium was the toughest game I've ever had to play emotionally. It was the only game I played in my career in 20 years that didn't mean anything because we were mathematically eliminated. So I played one game in Yankee Stadium that didn't count and it was the last game I ever played. The fans treated it like it was a playoff game. Drive to deep left, way back, and it's off the wall. A double by Jeter, and it's a 2 1 game. Top of the ninth inning, I was saying, take me out of the game before I mess it all up. And then, home run, home run, it's tied. Back goes Young, looking up, tie game. And I'm like, man, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. You know, I knew I was coming up third. Well, the script is there. The last page is in Derek's hands. I just knelt down. I said, God, if you have one more hit left in you, please let it be right here. Well, final game at Yankee Stadium for the captain, Mr. November, Mr. 3000, Derek Jeter. And... You know what's great about sports? They just give you these moments sometimes. It's like they said in Moneyball. How can you not be romantic about baseball? Let's get this RBI. There it is. I hate this game. <laughs> there it is. You better go home. You better go home. Believe, baby. Believe. And the final curtain call for the captain, number two, Derek Jeter. Soaking it all in. And as a Red Sox fan, I say a good riddance. But congrats on a great career. It would be 
true Hollywood and Gina gets a base hit to win the game. moments in Yankee Stadium and it just played out like it was a storybook ending and it's funny because people say oh it's all scripted yeah okay we scripted the whole entire thing it couldn't have gone any better after the game when I go out to shortstop I just wanted to remember the feeling of being at shortstop for the last time I wanted to take that with me and I just wanted to have a moment a moment to myself, even though it's not to myself because it's in front of all the Yankee fans, but for us as players, that's who we play for as fans, and they push you day in and day out. You're never satisfied, which is why we got along so good. I don't know if any athlete anywhere has bonded with the fans more than Derek has. There's a lot of people that have dreams of playing baseball. People see individuals that have had some level of success and they think they just woke up there but there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes a lot of preparation and a lot of people that help you along the way you have to work harder than everyone else and if you're passionate about it then it's not work i don't know if i'd change anything if i could go back you know i want to tell myself to have fun and enjoy a little bit more then I don't think I'd be where I am if I did. I wouldn't change anything. This is my stop. See you in the show. And that's all she wrote. Hey, look, man. I've said it a few times throughout this video and the last one. I'm a Red Sox fan, but well put together. The story well told by Derek Jeter. I had a lot of fun. Let me quickly go through and show you the rewards that we got from this um, moment's path, if you will. All right, in 2001, we did pick up an Alfonso Soriano card, which is cool. I've been really good with his 91, I think, overall second baseman card this year. So that's pretty cool. Uh, in 2000 and whatever, three, 2003, we get a Mike Messina card. Very nice, very nice. Uh, in 2004, we pick up Gary Sheffield, always one of my favorite right-handed hitters. Um, in 2006, we are gonna pick up Bernie Williams, who I've played a little bit with his 90 overall card. Pretty sweet switch hitting guy. In 2009, we are going to pick up new legend, CC Sabathia, the 2009 ALCS MVP. And then in 2011, we will pick up Ricky Henderson, who got 326 of his 1,406 career stolen bases with the Yankees. And then finally, in 2014, we just get this big old icon, which we just don't really want. But at the end of it all, we should be getting this brand new Captain of Captains Derek Jeter card, which it looks like we've got. Uh, this is the second year in a row he has been the Captain Captain card, the double captain, which if it works like last year, you can put any captain card in and they'll get a boost. Let's hop on over to Diamond Dynasty and check it out before we wrap the video. Yes, okay, Derek Jeter will boost captain series cards. He is the captain of captains. First of all, his core stats. I lost my words there. There was a cut and every, you know. Okay, 100, 125 contact, 48, 59 power, 81 vision, 102 clutch, Honestly, not that great of a card. Uh, he is all quirked out. But his boost, with five captains in the lineup, he's going to boost five batting clutch, five contact right, and five pitching clutch. And then all the way up to the tier three with nine captains in the lineup. That's 12 batting clutch, 12 contact right, 12 pitching clutch, and 10 walks per nine. I think... Don't think I have nine captains, but we're going to see. 
Okay, I lied. I have exactly nine captains. Let's just go ahead. You may or may not have these captains. You probably have some different ones. But here's the ones I've got in. Johnny Damon, uh, with his boost, goes up to a 90. Byron Buxton goes up to a 92. And he's up to 80 contact versus right and 70 clutch, which is really good. He's a low contact kind of guy. Um, Adalberto Mondesi is going to go up to a 90. 89, 87 contact, 72 clutch, 75, 82 power. Uh, Derek Jeter, his 90 goes up to a 91. Honestly, still pretty mid. And then David Ortiz, the 2000s captain, gets, I mean, pretty pretty good. Yeah, pretty good there. Uh, Pitching-wise, I've got Carlos Carrasco. Don't even ask me why I got him. I don't even remember. So he gets boosted up to a 90. Uh, I've got Nate Eovaldi, P4, but he gets boosted up to a 93. Uh, same with Rube Foster. I've got him... P3, so he goes up to a 91. And then P1, Clayton Kershaw, the lefty captain, goes up to a 98. And theoretically, I would be able to stack Kershaw here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so, I mean, I've only got tier 1 in here. But he's going to go up even further there. Uh, just for experiment purposes, I tried to get the tier 3 lefty boost and the tier 3 captain boost on Clayton Kershaw. Was not able to do it with the captains that I have. But I've got him tier 2 boosted. And tier 3 boosted. And he's up to a 99. Looking pretty solid there. Uh, one of my favorite pitchers every year, honestly. Uh, besides that, we got all of those rewards that fit in, supposedly, with the Subway Series captain. So let's check out that team. Alright, as you can see, can't field a full, full lineup. But pretty close with the Subway Series Derek Jeter, the 85 overall captain. We've got 13 out of the nine required players. We're going to get 15 contact right, 15 batting clutch, 15 pitching clutch, and 10 hits per nine. So here's how some of these cards look. You can't really see it because of my mug here, but this is Ricky Henderson in left field. Uh, 86, 74. He's got 99 speed. He goes up to an 86. He's kind of trash. We've just got other Yankees in there to fill in for the aesthetic. So there's Mickey Mantle. Uh, Bernie Williams here, 9105 contact, 81 power, 91 clutch, not bad, not bad. Paul O'Neill is just really great anyway, uh, but he, he get, goes up to an 89. This Soriano is going to go up to an 86. You see Jeter go up to an 89. Gary Sheffield over here at third base is actually a pretty solid card hitting-wise. Goes up to an 86. Chili Davis goes up to an 87 here. More Yankees on the bench. More Yankees over here. We've got Mariano in the pen. I think this is Rivera's only card out right now. He can get a couple of captain boosts. I think this one. And I think maybe he gets the Greg Maddox boost. Under 75 Ks per nine naturally. Because I've got him P2. Yeah, he's actually pretty good in that boost. Anyway, um, we got Mike Mussina in here. 87 overall. CC Sabathia is... Diamond Dynasty card, his first card of the year. Uh, 75 hits per nine base, 78 walks per nine base. He's really not very good as a base card, but with this boost, he does go up to an 87. He's not bad. Uh, we've got Andy Pettit here up to an 89, and then this Greg Maddox card from the first set of storylines up to an 87. So that's how it looks. Those are the rewards. I appreciate y'all going through these storylines with me. Maybe we will get another chapter of the Negro League storylines later in the year. But until then, uh, the Yankees suck. And we will see you next year for the Manny Ramirez storylines. Yeah, see you then. Peace out.